Hey, good morning guys. It is Friday morning about 9 o'clock and today I wanted to talk to you about aloe paint. It is warm <laughs> already in Richmond, Texas, right outside of Houston. And today, like I said, I want to talk to you about aloe plants. They are very easy to grow, to maintain, and they have quite a few medicinal factors and properties that are part of them. So, if you don't know what an aloe plant is, which I think most people do, this is one of my aloes, and there are a few jumping spiders on here, so I'm going to be very careful. Let's see here. It's a little stressed because I need to repot some of these other plants, so I'll do that later today. But so y'all see the jumping spider? Probably not. But sorry. This plant. This is the mother plant here, and I would say this is probably auntie right here. And since we've been <laughs> out of quarantine, the lizard just jumped on the table. These are all of the baby plants that have grown. So you can see it's really needing to be repotted. Okay, so this is a little of what your aloe plant will look like, okay? Now, when you decide that you want to use your aloe plant, you want to check for two things. You want to check for one, the color of the leaves. If it's brown, one of two things, either it is really uh, sunburnt, over watered, or in this case, like kind of stressed, so you want to feel it. It should feel plump, okay? If it feels flat, like a piece of paper, then that means it's not very hydrated. Or if it starts curling, and that's for any plant. Let's see here. If it starts curling on the ends, then that's also a sign of dehydration. So what I'm going to, to do, I should, probably should have watered this last night. Um, but what I'm going to do is see if I can't find, oh, here's a good one. This way and when you decide that you want to cut a leaf you want to cut as close to the base as possible it doesn't take you don't need a super sharp knife okay and this is what it looks like okay now with these I'm going to <laughs> there's more growing so I'm gonna pull all these out today if you want an aloe plant, let me know. For all my teachers that are having to prepare to go back to work in some capacity, whatnot, I would say get a few aloe plants and put in your classroom. By a few, I mean like you could probably do six in your classroom. Helps with the oxygen level as well as helps to purify, purify the air. So aloe plants um, are really, really great. And you want to do a quick science lesson, history lesson, reading lesson, then math lesson. <laughs> this is a, a great plant to, to start with. Okay. So planting an aloe. So plant aloes grow asexually. And what that means is, so if something grows sexually, that means they have a mother and a father male and female they get together they have offspring that's how we all got here so you may look at me and be like oh you look like your dad or oh you look like your mom and I have two other siblings but we don't all look the same okay but we have the same genetic structure we come from a mom and dad asexually when a plant or an organism is reproduces asexually that means they have one parent I guess you could say and all of the offspring will look exactly like that parent okay so 
that's good and bad when you're looking at things like viruses okay if plant a let's use our current situation if plant a is immune to covid and plant b is not immune to covid then all of the offspring of plant a will survive covid and all the ones from plant b will die from covid so those are kind of a couple of the pros and cons of having an asexual plant or being an asexual organism. Okay, so all that to say is if you want more aloes, just leave it in the pot, put some water on it when you think about it, and it's going to grow, reproduce. These are great plants to re-gift. I say the, the plant that just keeps on giving. So it'll grow, you stick it in a pot, and more than likely it's gonna grow out of the pot. Now I would say one way to, to kill an aloe is to overwater it and sometimes with the, even though it is a cactus, it should be able to withstand the heat. Sometimes when it's just like and like dogs and cats, like they were wild at some point in time and then they've become domesticated. Same thing with your aloe plant, depending on how you receive like if you get it at the store if you put it outside it will adjust to the environment but if it's inside and then you bring it outside sometimes it can send it into a little bit of a shock but just pay attention like mine like i said needs to be trimmed and it's somewhat outgrowing the pot but really it's just it doesn't have enough room because of all the other ones all right so let's get into it next we have dissecting your aloe now this yellow that it's kind of yellow slimy stuff it's called aloeine and it is not good for you especially if you're going to eat it okay now i would say when i had well i'll get to that later but we did a dissection in class and the kids thought it was the absolute coolest thing ever if your your kid likes playing with slime or if you have a kid that has high anxiety and they, they need like something in their hands dissecting an aloe is great you can get you can either grow them or that takes a little while but you can go to the grocery store farmers market and they have the really big ones they're nice and full those are the ones you really want to use so I'm going to show you quickly how to dissect this leaf and I brought out some smaller ones just because they are fuller and plumper than the one that I had outside and so like I said, you wanna cut it at the base and you can use, I think a plastic knife or a butter knife would work. So if you have your little person wanting to do this, those are uh, safer utensils. However, I would say teaching them how to properly use a knife is also a great science skill and a life skill. So when you're using a knife, you hold it. Now this is a paring knife and if I was letting Zoe do it, this would be a good knife for her. She likes to use a big chef knife, but it makes me nervous. So you put your thumb um, right here on the, the base, I guess you could say, where the blade starts. Hey everybody. And then your finger, you want to put here. Now if I had a chef knife, I would put it here. Alright, so I'm going to hold it here. And then, like I said, I've already cut the bottom from the plant, but I'm going to cut it again. Okay? You see, it's real simple. I mean, it's not like trying to char through like a hard piece of meat. Now, anytime you cut, always cut away away from yourself. Okay? So, I'm just going to cut the pointy edges off. Now, they're not super sharp, but if you have like the, I would say, I don't know, anybody if they poke you, it's not going to be fun. Okay, so remember, just cut away from yourself. And if you were doing this with a little person, I would have them to put it on the table. You could do this on the cement outside on the patio on the table, what have you. And then just going to cut the top part off. It's just a little difficult to manage. Now, these wonderful little pieces, we can go stick those in the compost. The next piece is the aloe gel. It is the clear meat like say in the in between the leaves and all you do is just cut off I'm gonna do this you're gonna cut off the top part and almost like you're filleting a piece of fish where you get the skin off okay and 
this is where it gets really fun for the kiddos because they're like, Ooh, you know, and they start to see the, the slime, <laughs> which is the aloe vera gel, okay? So, do all that, get it off of there as much as you can. Now, while I'm doing this, if you have little people that play outside and sometimes they run into an ant bed, this is something that I always kept at my garden at school was an aloe plant growing year round. Uh, we were in the garden year round and so I had an aloe plant there and I taught the kids the first day that we were outside in the garden hey if you get you know stung bit by some ants or or whatnot this is what you need to do take a piece of aloe you don't need a big piece and just rub it on now i'm really struggling with this just rub it on that spot and i'll take a little bit of this rub 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 okay and at the end of the day it's gone might itch a little bit later rub 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 and it would be the cutest thing my little my little ones they'd be like five and six and they were like miss cats and i need some of that green stuff and i was like okay and they would get in there and rub it on there and <laughs> and there you go so you have little ones you don't want them to become discouraged for playing outside i think being outside is will always be the best thing and so have some little incentives for them being outside and like i said nobody wants to be stung by an ant and then your ankles on fire so here we go this is essentially what it looks like now mind you i will go through and get some more of this the leaves off of it without chopping off my finger in the process all right, so if you're going to use this to really do anything with, especially ingesting it, the aloeing, which was that yellow stuff, is, like I said, not good for you. And you want to place this in a container. Actually. I brought out a container of water. So I'm just going to stick this in the water and let it do its thing. So really, you want to let that sit in just some clear, clear, hopefully your water is clear, but just some regular water for about 15 to, to 30 minutes. And that gets all the aloeine out of there, okay? Now, I know I said it's not good for you to ingest if you... I have no let me just say this I have not had any issues where I've taken it um, I was cutting the grass and walked into a, a bed of ants and yes they let me know that I was stepping on their house and grabbed a piece of aloe and you know rubbed it on my ankles and I was good you know I was good to go the other piece that if you're planning on keeping this around go ahead and cut it and then stick it in the freezer put it in a ziploc bag and stick it in the freezer and then if your little one or you run into something and you need to rub some aloe on it that cool sensation makes your life feel so much better um, especially if you've been bitten by some ants you just same process makes a nice cool pack as well as medicine right off of there if you're not going to eat it it's okay to leave it on the on the leave the leaf part attached to it and stick it in the in the freezer. It's all in what you want to do with it. If you want to use it as a gel, simply do the same process. I'm gonna leave that there and rub it, uh, blend it, and then you can mix it. Put a little tea tree oil in it to help preserve it and put it in your hair. If you want to make an aloe mask same concept rub 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 on your face scrub whatnot okay
Y'all have any questions? Good morning, everybody. I know some of you are up because you have little people that just don't ever sleep. So, maybe I can post. So, um, Ebony, putting the aloe in the water, there's, like, when you cut your aloe plant, there's, a like, a dark yellow film that comes out of it. I believe it's called aloeine, and it's not good for you. Okay. Um, it's not good to ingest and so the water helps to pull all of that out of there now if I had maybe to Sunday I'm gonna add some water to my other plants to see if I can get them to plump up a little bit and I'll do another demonstration to show you how much of the Halloween comes out but your water will turn a shade of yellow and I don't know if y'all can't probably see this but it is yellow and y'all can't really see that but it'll come out of the plant Here we go. Let's see if y'all can see that you see that yellow there that's the aloeine okay yeah so you it's not a big deal if you're gonna take it and just you know rub it on an ant bite but if you're going to ingest it that water helps to pull all of that all of that out okay so I would say this definitely works much better if you have a bigger a bigger plant okay and try growing it on your on your own because it's just fun to grow your own and have your own okay let's see here all right eating it so we're gonna try this out and see how this works y'all I saw this on YouTube and I have not actually tried this myself. I think the last time I put aloe in my smoothie, I like, oh, gagged. But however, I think that Halloween stuff was in there. So it didn't taste very good. I'm going to give it another go. I saw two recipes. So same process. Ooh, great question. So Ebony says, does the flowering time affect the aloe my large one gets a flower once a year should i wait until after the flower leaves to cut okay so low-key i don't know however my aloe doesn't flower i think that you could do one of two things you can cut some of the leaves like maybe two or three on the outside depending on how big it is or you can wait till after it flowers and i think it will be it will be okay does anybody else have any experience with flowering aloes i've never had an aloe to flower but i do know that those um, some aloes do do flower mine doesn't but that's okay let's see i'm trying to do that one more y'all get a big piece of aloe okay so you're not over here struggling like I am all right here we go okay awesome okay I look forward to seeing those, those pictures here we go so let's see here you need a blender okay couple of versions but I'm gonna show you one version and then I'll show you the other version uh, lemon honey and you'll need some ice cold water okay and let's see here then I'm gonna take my aloe now I will say you want to Get as much of the, the green off. Uh oh. Sorry, guys. Somehow I flipped the camera. All right. You can take your aloe, put it in your blender. Now, if you want aloe gel just to like put in your hair, just take it, blend it up really good. And there you go. Now, what does putting aloe gel in your hair do? Acts just like gel. <laughs> it's not going to be that 
store-bought grade where you can pretty much style it and it doesn't move but it, it does do the does do the trick and it will help to strengthen your hair help to regrow it all that good stuff okay so here we are we have the aloe gel and I'm going to go ahead and put lemon here Fresh squeeze lemon, lemon juice. Uh, yeah, you probably don't want the seeds in there. I'm gonna save the seeds for later. The struggle is real, y'all. There we go. Alright. Save those seeds. You can use them for growing whatever later. Alright. And then I'm going to put just a little, little water just to help the blending process and put that on. There we go. It looks kind of frothy right there and so that's what it's going to to look like okay now I only used a little bit and this. I'll pour it in here so y'all can see okay what it looks like all right now, at this state, hey, you can take it. Um, I put a little lemon. It smells pretty good. Okay, I'm going to taste it. See what... It's a little frothy. Okay. Now, remember, when you take, when you cut the gel out, leave it in the water for about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. So, you get all that out. So here, now this next step, you can go from here, add your lemon, put some water in it, and be done. Or take a little honey to your liking. I like honey. Hey, Mom. All right. And then I'm just going to stir it. Stir, 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 stir. Stir. And this is just water, ice cold water. Okay. I want to stir. I'm trying to get that honey mixed in there. And let's see here. So, cheers to the aloe juice. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. All right. Come through aloe juice. Not bad. Definitely better than the first time I had it. First time I was like, oh my God, this is disgusting. Okay. What's next? Medicinal purposes. So I know you all have some medicinal purposes. So put them in the, in the chat. And if you haven't yet, please like and share, like and share. And... Type in your what you use aloe for. I have used aloe to make gel um, before my hair was was locked up for my edges or just to do a type of conditioner. So I would mix it in with some olive oil. And sometimes if I felt like my hair needed a stimulation, some stimulation, I would add in some cayenne pepper, mix it in there, and just go for it. Uh, the... Like I said, if you have a little person that likes to play with slime, they are going to love 
dissecting this. So the fact that they can just put it all in their hands and and see the <laughs> the membrane from inside, all of that, you can simply take that and rub it into your skin. If you're going outside, especially with this this heat, sometimes it's really cloudy, so it doesn't seem like it's hot. You know, taking some aloe, rubbing it on your skin before you go outside helps to protect your skin, also helps to keep it hydrated. And aloe, it does rejuvenate on its own. So some of those properties are transferred to you as the as a consumer. So just keep that um, keep that in mind when you're when you're using it. And like I said, it's a lot easier on your on your skin than a lot of other other things. Okay, let's see. So we talked about ingesting it. Oh, so help with digestion. Also help with um, just cleansing. Like you're doing a cleanse, you want to do your own. This is eight ounces. I think is a great start. Pay attention to your body, especially if you're deciding to do this on your own. Do your own research. Check with your doctor. I, I'm working on my doctor, but I am not that kind of doctor. You know, I didn't sleep at, was it the Holiday Inn Express? So do check with your doctor and before you start this whole process. And just do a little bit at a time. Like, you know, this is about, I would say about four ounces or so. And see how you like it and... Go from there. Grow your own aloes. It's much cheaper than the store, although you can get them for about a dollar. Okay? And remember, if you have little people, keep a plant on hand. You can simply cut. If they, you know, fall down, scratch themselves, rub it on there. They're good to go. If they plant outside, get some, same thing, some aloe pieces, and just stick them in the freezer. I brought my Ziploc bag out. So, get you a Ziploc bag and stick them in there and whenever they fall down they already know they can go grab it rub it on there and never even know they fell down or got bit by ants okay there we go. so that is everything that i have for gaddy's garden on aloe plants like i said we talked about the basic yeah, teacher and me came out our basic aloe plants planting, dissecting, eating, and then some of the medicinal purposes. So there you have it. Happy gardening, happy planting. And since I have you on here, if you need something for your skin, Zoe stuff has two. This is a two ounce container, eight ounce and 10 ounce container of all organic moisturizer, shea butter, olive oil, jojoba oil, and more. And this also is great for being outside, your hair, your skin, keeping it safe, keeping it protected, and it's easy. Good morning. All right, I think that is everything, guys. Um, yeah, so I'm going to work on these other aloes to see if I can get them plumped up. My neighbor's cutting his yard. Sorry, it's kind of loud. But I'm going to work on these other aloes to see if I can get them uh, a little plumpier and trim them up a little bit, repot them, and then we'll, I'll see about making this over again and give you a, a bigger and a better uh, display of what the aloe looks like. I mean, y'all can see it on YouTube, but you want a good, nice piece of meat there. Is there any way to extract the gel? Yes. And... I do have aloe, <laughs> it depends on how you want the aloe, Nikita. Now, I have an aloe plant here that they need a home. I have, I think, 20 in this bucket, and they all need to be repotted, which I'm doing that soon. The light and fluffy does have aloe vera butter in it, and it's, now this is just kind of my leftover two ounces that I call them. But the yellow is the light and fluffy, and that does have aloe vera butter in it. All right, Mama, I'll see you later. My mom says she's going to go get rid of some of the grass in her garden. All right, so that, any other questions? I don't want to rush off. And yes, Nikita, there is a way to extract the gel. You simply cut 
just cut off the the green piece and the gel in the middle yeah but you want to make sure that the aloe is nice and and plump okay if it's flat then it, it probably needs some water okay the ones at the store are normally like a really good a good size to use these are just ones that i had at the house so There's your aloe vera mask. Let me just rinse it off. Y'all, this feels so great. Probably because it's hot outside too. All right. Any other questions? I'm going to give y'all a little bit. Not bad, not bad. All right, guys. Well, that is all we have today for aloe planting on gaddy's garden and continue to grow your groceries i will see you guys later